Hi, my name is Connie Kuklanis and you're watching the video Lee Screen Principles and Method of Assessment. As with the video on the HES screen, this video will be discussing the principles of the Lee screen and the method by which we go about assessing ocular movements utilising the Lee screen. The Lee screen is in essence an adaptation of the HES screen and as such its indications for use are the same. In general, we will utilise it in patients with incontinent strabismus, where we're interested in mapping underactions and overactions or measuring the deviation in nine positions of gaze. It also provides a permanent accurate record of ocular movements and thereby we can compare the uh, patient's progress over time. At this point, I'll just mention a couple of advantages of the Lee screen. Firstly, it's less dissociative and this is the case because we're not using red green goggles uh, and red green lights and also the contrast between the tangent screen and the background is greater and therefore the stimulus is stronger okay the lee screen consists of two independently illuminated perspect tan tangent screens and we can see here at the image of the right on the right that this is the tangent screen here that's not illuminated and at 90 degrees here is the illuminated tangent screen. We also have a mirror that bisects the screen just here at 45 degrees. So the mirror in dissociating the eyes will effectively uh, result in one eye seeing one screen and the other eye seeing the other screen. Now what we didn't see in the photograph just then is that the Lee screen also comes with a pair of pointers. So one pointer is for the examiner and the other pointer is for the patient. We also have a foot switch or a foot pedal and this allows the orthoptist to turn on and off the screens so they can choose to illuminate whichever screen they choose to at any point in time. So how does the Lee screen actually work? Well, the patient is fixing with the eye that's observing the illuminated side. So if we look at this particular example, when the patient has their chin on the chin rest, the right eye will be fixing on the illuminated side. The examiner will then point to one element on the tangent screen. So let's say for instance, that they commence with um, primary position and what they'll do is they'll point with their pointer at this specific position. They'll ask the patient to point or superimpose their pointer on the examiner's pointer, but to do so on the non-illuminated screen. And the reason the patient's able to do this is because the plane mirror is creating a virtual image such that the tangent screen and where the examiner is pointing is superimposed on the non-illuminated screen. And this is purely based on the principle of plane mirrors. And if we have a look here at an example, um, a mirror or a plane mirror will create a virtual image behind the mirror, which is what is happening in this particular instance. So effectively, the patient will be able to take their pointer and superimpose it onto the examiner's pointer by simply pointing to the non-illuminated screen. Now, in order for the orthoptist to take a recording from where the patient has um, indicated there is superimposition, the orthoptist will need to illuminate the non-illuminated screen and then take the recording before they continue the test. Here we have a photograph of a patient being assessed using the Lee screen. And in this instance, given that the screen on the left is illuminated, it is the left eye that's fixing and we're assessing the right eye. And we can see that the orthoptus is pointing to the screen that's illuminated and the patient is responding by using their pointer and telling the orthoptus where they perceive superimposition to be or where they perceive their pointer to be on top of the examiner's pointer. 
In terms of recording the least square findings, we utilize the exact same chart that we use for the HES screen and we record in exactly the same way that we record using the HES screen. In this instance, however, the fixing eye will be determined by the tangent screen that was illuminated. In summary, the Lee screen is an adaptation of the HES screen. However, the principle by which we assess the patient using the Lee screen is slightly different to that of the HES screen. The difference relies basically on the way in which we dissociate the eyes and how we go about um, superimposing the images. And with the Lee screen, there is a plain mirror dissociating the eyes and it's a virtual image being utilised to map eye movements. I should mention at this point, which I don't believe I've mentioned in the video, that the Lee screen is based on foveal projection. So in this aspect, it is the same as the HES screen. And finally, the plotting and recording of the Lee screen is identical to that of the HES screen. Okay, that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching.